Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Trembling Aspen. The colors are just really extreme right now. The, the aspen has gone from a dark green of summer to a, a bright yellow and maybe a rusty yellow now. And uh, today the wind picked up and the leaves are starting to come down, unfortunately. Sometimes we get a good two weeks of, uh, of beautiful yellow forest. So where does trembling aspen get its name? Well, the leaves in the wind tend to tremble or quake. And that's because the stem of the leaf, or the petiole, is flat. It's, uh, it's very, very flat, and when the wind blows, it tends to twist. And so you get this quaking or trembling action. Trembling aspen has this heart-shaped leaf, which uh, has a, a very, very gentle serration on the outside, and the leaves come in a variety of sizes. And the trunk of the tree uh, is very smooth and whitish when it's young, and as it ages it develops cracks and it gets this uh, grayish color. So just what else is growing here? Well, if you look behind me, you'll see this golden foliage in the shrub layer. This, uh, all this golden foliage behind me is beaked hazel. It's a very common uh, shrub on rich sites in the boreal forest. And beaked hazel is everywhere here. Aspen certainly forms the overstory canopy, but beaked hazel forms an understory canopy, and it covers this entire site. And if you look down on the forest floor, you're going to notice a number of herbs, but the dominant herb for sure is large-leafed aster, um, a very common herb, again, on rich sites in the boreal forest. So if you look carefully on the forest floor, you're going to find some other herbs. This is colt's foot, another herb that uh, indicates a rich site. This has uh, been chewed up by bugs and it's been through a few frosts so it's not doing so well. Likewise, there's, there's some bracken fern scattered throughout here which is turning brown, getting ready for winter. And uh, there's the odd choke cherry in here as well. So these species and others are commonly found together in what's called an association. That's a type of ecological community with a predictable species composition. You're going to find that same type of community repeated across the boreal forest on sites like this. Trembling aspen, or poplar as it's also known here in Canada, is a very uh, common species in the boreal forest, but it's also found in many other forest types. It ranges all the way from Alaska, right across Canada, down into the U.S. mountain states, as well as New England. Trembling aspen often grows in relatively pure stands like this, but it's also a major component of mixed woods across the boreal forest. So we're in the boreal forest, which is a fire-driven ecosystem. Fires frequently um, destroy the old forest and also renew the, the younger forest. And aspen are no exception to that. Aspen trees are uh, not quite as flammable as conifers, but in a hot dry year when we have large hot fires, uh, those fires will certainly replace an aspen stand. And aspen are certainly adapted to those conditions. We say that aspen are one of the shade intolerant species, meaning they like full sunlight. So after a stand replacing fire, uh, they grow very quickly and, and very well. Um, in full sunlight. And aspen has a couple of different ways of reproduction. Uh, it produces seed for sure, and aspen seed is very, very small and light and is easily carried by the wind great distances so that it can colonize new locations. But aspen can also grow from root suckers. So uh, there's a tree behind me here and it's got roots that extend all over this area. And if we cut that tree down or if that tree burns down in a fire, those root suckers are going to emerge and produce new shoots um, all over this area. So I find this really interesting because aspen that reproduce through seed are going to grow as individual trees, but aspen that reproduce through root suckering are going to share a root system with its neighbors. In fact, those aren't neighbors, that's the same tree. They're actually clones. And I think that's what's going on here to some extent at least. Um, this may be a fire origin stand from, from way back when, but uh, there's no evidence of that now. It's been here a long time and you see stems of different sizes and I'm going to presume those trees are of different ages. So when I look around here, I see a, a number of things. One is that the aspen stems are in uh, a complete array of all size classes. I, there's very, very small ones and very, very large stems. Um, I also see a lot of stems on the ground, broken stems, stumps. Um, so some of these trees are getting to a certain age. Uh, they're rotting or falling down. Um, there's not a lot of fungus in this stand. I don't see a lot of uh, conks on the side of the trees, but I do see uh, some evidence of hypoxylon canker where stems have broken off halfway up. Um, so what's going on here is these stems are competing for space. The wind blows and the trees sway 
and they knock branches off of each other. Sometimes those branch tips get infected. Sometimes the, the stem rots, the tree falls down. You create a gap. And in that gap, the, the sun is gonna hit the soil. It's gonna warm up a little bit. And if it warms up enough, a new aspen root sucker is gonna emerge and a new stem will grow and try and compete for space. There's actually a very large tree back there that uh, I think uh, could be the mother clone for many, many trees in this stand. So this tree behind me is the largest aspen that I can find in this stand, and it is way larger than all the rest. It has furrowed bark, um, the bark is all cracked, the, uh, the crown is breaking up, and, and limbs are dying. There's limbs on the ground here. Uh, it's definitely the oldest tree here, and it's very likely uh, the mother tree that has created clones for, for many of the other stems here in this, uh, in this stand. So here we have a really good example of a couple trees that really illustrate the uh, size class diversity in this stand, but I also think they tell the story of what's going on here ecologically. This is the most common size tree in this stand. Most of the trees are this size, and this is the size of tree that is forming the canopy. This tree reaches up to the canopy and fills its space in, in the wind. It's, it's blowing around and competing with its neighbors, and it's holding its space. Beside it is this little one, which, which for sure originated from a root sucker, um, and it tried to grow beside this other tree under that canopy. It likely didn't get enough sun to survive. Uh, disease and insects uh, probably took over and the tree is now dead. So this is exactly what's going on here. Each of these stems are doing their best to grow, uh, survive, take up space and thrive. And they may be connected. In fact, they're very likely connected underground. They probably share the same root system as some of their neighbors. So they're sharing nutrients and water. Um, so there's a bit of cooperation going on, but there's also competition going on. Little trees like this that uh, emerge through stump suckers are, are not doing so well if they, if they come up in the wrong place and they perish. If it comes up in a more of a clearing space, um, it's got a greater likelihood of survival. And so when we walk around and we see large trees and small trees and medium trees, and uh, most of the trees here are healthy. There's a bit of fungus here and there, but not much. It's, it's quite a thriving uh, forest stand, um, but it's also one that is experiencing death and rebirth all the time. So I find this really interesting because the classic thinking around Aspen is that it's always in an even age stand. Um, and that's partially true. It, it regenerates from fire or harvesting uh, for free. You don't have to plant aspen. The root suckering will take over and if you cut or burn an aspen stand, you're gonna get a nice even aged aspen stand um, that loves that full sunlight that it gets. But if that stand is allowed to uh, live long enough and doesn't get disturbed again, then individual trees are gonna start falling out of, of the stand. And when that happens, it's gonna create gaps. And when you have gaps, you're gonna get sunlight. And that sunlight is going to warm up the forest floor in, in certain places and trigger some root suckering. And when that root suckering occurs in a gap that's big enough, then that younger tree will get enough light. So uh, aspen, even though it's classically thought of as even aged, it can form these multi-aged stands. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.